this video reviews how we can apply conservation of momentum to elliptical orbits. So imagine that we have a planet here that is orbiting the sun in an elliptical orbit. The planet feels a gravitational force towards the sun and is traveling at a particular velocity v around the sun. Kepler's first law tells us that the sun is located at a particular foci or foci of this elliptical orbit. If you need to learn a little bit more about Kepler's laws, review the link in the description or the one that I put on the haiku page. So if we assume that we are looking at this diagram from above, we would say that the z-axis comes out of the screen. And we know that the gravitational force would exert no torque or angular force about the z-axis, since the force is perpendicular to the z-axis. And since there is zero net torque about the z-axis, we know that angular momentum will be conserved. So let's look at this idea a little bit more. Say that we have a planet that is located at point B and is traveling with a particular velocity VB. And once it reaches the other side of the sun to point A, it is traveling in the opposite direction with a velocity of VA. And we will label the different distances away from the center of the sun to the center of the, uh, or the center of the planet on the opposite sides of the ellipses as shown. We know that the angular momentum at point A is going to equal, equal the angular momentum at point B because, as we discussed before, the angular momentum of this system is conserved. We know that the equation for angular momentum of a point mass is mass times velocity times the radius, where the velocity and the radius must be perpendicular. This is why we chose the points on opposite sides of the ellipse. When uh, we then see that these masses cancel, and we are left with the velocity multiplied by the radius at point B, A is equal to the velocity times the radius at point B. Let's do a, an example with this idea. A 4 times 10 to the 15 kilogram satellite travels in an elliptical orbit around a planet of mass 3 times 10 to the 19th kilograms. At the point A, which is 5 times 10 to the 5 meters away from the planet, the satellite has a velocity of 2.5 times 10 to the 3rd meters per second. We want to know what the satellite's velocity is when it is 7 times uh, 10 to the 6 meters away. So our diagram is going to look a little bit something like this where we are missing the velocity of the satellite at point B. All right, so <clears throat> we can use our conservation of momentum equation that we developed on the previous slide. And we know our radius and velocity at point A, and we know the radius at point B, and we're just missing that velocity at point B. And we can solve, and we see that the velocity at point B is 179 meters per second, which is much slower than the velocity at point A, which makes sense because the further away from the planet, the slower the object is going to be traveling.